All right, let's talk about timecode. Um, timecode is really cool, and all it really is is an audio file that you put in Ableton, and it sends audio to ProPresenter, and uh, ProPresenter listens to that audio file, and it can determine, or it can lock the timeline in Ableton with the timeline in ProPresenter, so you can sync video content with your Ableton project. It's really, really cool, and I'll show you how it works. But what we're going to do is uh, we need to get a timecode audio track in our Ableton project, and then route that audio track directly to our ProPresenter computer. And uh, I'm doing the audio routing. The first step is to route an audio channel that comes out of Ableton and goes into your ProPresenter computer. I'm doing that over Dante, so I have a Dante channel routed from this computer to my ProPresenter. You can also do that with USB interfaces. So you can come, if you're using a USB interface, you can come out with one of the channels from that interface into another USB interface to your ProPresenter computer. So you can do it the analog way, or you can do it over Dante or SoundGrid, whatever you want to do. Um, so the first step is, is getting that audio channel routed. Mine, I have 16 channels coming out of Ableton. 1 through 15 are my groups here uh, for click and for all the, the different instruments. And number 16 is specifically routed to that Ableton computer. So uh, once you have that audio channel routed, I'm not going to do that in this video, but it's a one-time deal. You only have to do it once, and I can walk you guys through that. Uh, when you go to do it. Um, but the first step on my weekly setup, I need to generate a timecode audio file. And I can do that if I go on the internet. Um, all I gotta do is Google timecode generator. Generator. Um, I'm looking for this site here, LTC2. This is kind of an open source website that allows you to generate that audio file for free. Uh, so I'm gonna choose a frame rate, and 30 is pretty standard, so we're gonna use 30 frames. We're gonna use a sample rate of 44.1 because that's the sample rate our multi-tracks are in. We're gonna go for a 24-bit depth. And then for duration, I'm only gonna do 10 minutes. Uh, now, I could do one timecode file for the whole set, but it's a lot easier if I do a different timecode file for each song. So the thing about that is you need to make sure the start time is different for each of those files. So song one will have a start time of one hour. Song two will have a start time of two hours. Song three will have a start time of three hours. And doing it this way just makes it a lot easier to time some of this stuff, and you'll see why in a minute. But uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to generate this time code file at, starting at one hour. And we're going to go ahead and hit generate. And what it does is it creates that file and allows you to download it right here. So you have a nice little time. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, kind of like an, an old modem, right? And so embedded in that annoying sound is all the information on where we're at, on what time it is in the project, right? So now that we've got that generated, we're just going to go ahead and import it into our Ableton project. Uh, so I'm going to take my little timecode audio file, and I'm going to drag it into its own track on my project. And uh, once I do that, I'm just going to make it start at the beginning here and then trim the tail end to the length of the song and I'll put up the top because it looks prettier <laughs> so there it is that's my time code file it's in my project now I just need to make sure that this track gets routed only to the Ableton computer on my system it actually bypasses the soundboard entirely and goes directly to the Ableton computer over Dante so that's channel 16 is what I've got routed for that and that's it on the Ableton side we just have um, our timecode track that goes to the Ableton computer and our project that goes over to the soundboard like normal. Uh, so let's go over to the ProPresenter side. And on the ProPresenter side, I'm running Dante Virtual Sound Card on here as well uh, as the Ableton computer. And so I've got four channels of audio going out for Spotify and four coming in. And I've got my timecode routed to channel four um, in on ProPresenter. So, I've got Jehovah here, uh, and this is the normal Jehovah presentation, nothing special about it right now. Uh, the very first thing that I need to do is go up to window, uh, or no, I'm sorry, view timecode, or you can hit command shift T, control shift T. Um, and this is the timecode window. This is where we set up that audio track to come into ProPresenter. So once it's routed in Dante, or I've got my USB interface set up, I'm going to come here, and you can click this to engage it or disengage it. It is engaged, but it's stopped. It doesn't hear any time code right now. I'm going to hit this little settings gear, and this is where I'm going to assign the audio input. So I'm using Dante Virtual Sound Card. If you're using USB, your interface will show up here. You select it, and then you select the channel that it's coming in on. I happen to know that it's coming in on channel 4 because that's how I routed it. 
the format is 30 frames per second because that's the, the file that we exported was 30 FPS. And the offset we're going to leave at zero. This would be if you needed ProPresenter to listen like a second before or a second after, you can offset it a little bit, but typically that's going to be at zero. Um, so there you go. Now timecode is routed, the audio channel is coming in, and when I go over to hit play on Ableton, we can see it playing. There it is. So now this is tracking with my time with my uh, Ableton project exactly. So if I jump ahead to the verse, you can see the timeline is going to jump. There we go. Now we're a minute 39 seconds in. And they stay in lockstep with each other. So pretty cool. The last thing I have to do on this window is I have to select the playlist that my timecode presentation is in. So I'll, we use our Sunday playlist here, so I'll select that. I'm just going to drag this guy to the side and it can chill over there for a minute. So now let me come to my Jehovah playlist, um, or my Jehovah presentation. This is the normal one we use on a Sunday. And I'm going to come up to this little icon here. It looks like kind of like a playhead and a track in Ableton. This is my timeline on, on ProPresenter. Uh, this is the thing that tracks with timecode, and you can see the little timecode option here. First thing we're going to have to do is set this to one hour, because that's what we put the first song at. Uh, so the second song would go to two hours, and you'd have that two-hour track. And we didn't make sure that the duration is uh, long enough for the song. I think it defaults to 300 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead and put it at like 1500. Something that's going to uh, uh, encompass enough time <laughs> for the entire song. So now all I, I got to drag in my content to this timeline. So we're running a lyric video. So what I would do is I would come and grab my lyric video and just drag it into the timeline. I'm not going to put it in the presentation. I'm actually just going to drop it right in the timeline right here. So it doesn't live down in the presentation, it only lives in the timeline. And uh, let me get that back to the start point here. I'm going to zoom out and then just slide it all the way to the beginning. So now, since we're at one hour, right, um, as soon as it sees, as soon as the time code goes to one hour, it's going to automatically fire this video. Now this is a very important step. I'm going to right click on this pink video here and I'm going to go to Inspector. And I'm going to go to the second tab and uh, make the re-trigger, set it to always. This is really important because if you restart that video, sometimes if it's not set to re-trigger, it won't fire again and you'll be out of sync. So you want to make sure that it always re-triggers when you have it in there. Um, but now, uh, once I enable timecode, watch this. It pops up over here on my timecode window. I have a little note, hey, at one hour, Jehovah plays, right? So now it's listening to timecode at one hour. I've got the video dropped in there. So let's go over to Ableton and we're going to hit play and let's see what happens. Look at that. It fires my video. And this is this video is going to track exactly with the Ableton track. Um, so if I skip ahead to the verse, now we're in the verse. Let me skip ahead to the second chorus. Now it's at the, at the second chorus. So it tracks perfectly. Uh, no matter if I jump around or whatever, it's always going to be exactly on time, just like I want it. Uh, and, you know, there, you might need to come in here and move the video forward or backward. Uh, sometimes I'll have to come into the inspector, and I'll have to trim sections off the front of the video or the tail of the video to get it to line up exactly. The lyric videos tend to be a second or two off, so sometimes you need to come in here and trim it just to make sure that it... Uh, it lines up perfectly every time. But that's what you got to do. So now on Ableton, when we hit play, it fires our video automatically. Our video stays in lockstep with our audio. Awesome. But the next step is what do we do with the stage display? Because obviously we still need lyrics on the stage display. Also, all us worship leaders know we can't go without our lyrics. So if I click it now, right now, it's going to lay the lyrics on top of my video, which I don't want, right? Well, the best way to do this, uh, and we have two options. We can either... Um, automate this so that Ableton runs the stage display lyrics as well, or we can have someone do it manually. But either way, what we need to do is we need to make sure that these slides don't show up on our audience screen. And the best way to do this is through audience looks. And if you're not familiar with audience looks, it just determines which layers, backgrounds, slides, whatever, go to what screens, right? So I'm going to create a new audience look. I'm going to come here to screens, I'm going to say edit looks, and then I'm going to create a new one. Well, add a new preset and I'm going to call it lyric video. Okay. 
And here is all the screen outputs that are on this, uh, this ProPresenter computer and all the layers that are going to these things. So first, I don't want the props layer really going anywhere. Uh, messages layer, this is like if there's a kid's um, message or something. That can go everywhere but stream. Um, and I don't want it on the stream key either. Announcement layer is not going anywhere. Uh, my slide layer, I, I don't want it going to my left or right sc screens. I only want it going to the stream. Uh, and my media layer, I pretty much want going everywhere except stream key. So uh, this is just determining what content you're sending to what screens, right? I'm going to take the slides off of my main screens so that they don't show. And then I'm going to make sure the stream key has my lower thirds. And if you're familiar with uh, any of this stuff, you've probably done this before. All right, so now I got my Lyric Video preset done. And I'm going to change uh, this uh, on, on the timecode line. I'm going to add an action, an audience look action, and make it switch to Lyric Video. So whenever it comes across this point in the timeline, the audience look is going to change to Lyric Video. And then I'm going to take the action off of my first slide here. Uh, or I'll just change that to that to Lyric Video as well. So now, whenever I play my track, it's going to switch the audience to Lyric Video so that my uh, slides don't show up over the video. Does that make sense? Um, so now the slides only go where I want them to go. Cool. All right, so now the, you could stop there, and, and that's all you, you need to do is just have your pro presenter person run the lyrics for the stage display while the lyric video is doing its thing on stage. But I want to take it a step further. Let's automate the lyrics on the, on the, the audience screen uh, because it's not that hard to do and it'll be perfect every time, right? In order to do this, all I got to do, I'm going to disable timecode, then I'm going to go back to the beginning on ProPresenter here, and I'm just going to hit this little record button. Then I'm going to re-enable timecode. Now we're recording the timeline, okay? So when I go back and hit play on ProPresenter, any changes that I make, it's going to record. So let me skip ahead to the verse here. Um, so we'll, st we'll just have to go through the song and bring up the lyrics. And it's going to record all of my changes as I go around. So you notice every time I change a slide, it's recording in this timeline. So when I stop it, I'm going to disable timecode and disable recording mode, then come back and re-enable timecode. All of those slide changes are now recorded under these specific times. And if I messed up a time, I can come in here to the timeline and actually drag them around and retime them. But now, when I go to play it back, let's come back to Ableton and start our track again. It's going to fire the slides the way that I want. Uh, so let me skip ahead to that verse again. And it should fire my verse slide right away. And there it is. So now my stage display is tracking with the lyric video, and I have no human interaction whatsoever. All you got to do is uh, basically have the person in the back just monitoring it, right? Um, and obviously I don't have these slides timed out right, but let's go to that, I'll try to advance ahead to that Q3 to watch it change. It's coming up right here, just to make sure it works. So when it hits Q3, it should go here. Boom, and the stage display changes. Cool. So all you got to do is time out these Q changes uh, as you record it. Just record, go through the song, make your, your slide, you know, record the slides. And then all that has to happen is your guy on stage during the beginning of the set starts Ableton and it fires everything in ProPresenter with no human interaction needed. So it's it's your choice whether you want to automate the stage display lyrics or just have your ProPresenter person run them while the, the lyric video is going. I like automating because I don't want that ProPresenter person to hit a button that then takes away my lyric video mid-service. Um, but yeah, I mean that's really all there is to it. Uh, the biggest thing is just to make sure that when you go to the next song that your audience look, you have another audience look action on there to bring it back to the normal song setting so that your slides come back to the main screen. Uh, but other than that, that's really all there is to it. We're just routing an audio channel from one place to the other and setting our timeline up. And it works every time. It's extremely rel reliable. So um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, but have fun. Let's be creative.